everyone. I'm Lou Stutter, producer at Toys for Bob, and I'm here to talk to you about Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Crash, Crash Bandicoot! Sequel to Crash Bandicoot Morphed. Sony. The devious villains Neo Cortex and Dr. Entropy have finally escaped their interdimensional prison, leaving an evil scientist-sized hole Phone's in the universe. Phone's not even here. I got now so taken by surprise. Now they've got their eyes set on not only simply conquering this dimension, but all dimensions. And it's up to Crash and Coco to save the day. Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time is the first totally new game in the Crash Bandicoot series in over a oh, decade. It's got an update. Oh! So for us at Toys for Bob, Gosh, we felt it. that it was important to reintroduce longtime fans as I, uh, well as new I players. I just got done cutting my hair. Franchise. So, <laughs> first we made it's sure been, to incorporate uh, the classic tense, to precise, run and get here. and perspective. I'm in the middle of exporting a video. The There's a lot going on here. And then we wanted to introduce exciting new elements that we also can't crash for to so check this out let's start with I'm trying to export the podcast this why is it taking so long start like i feel like my edits have taken so much longer for, since i switched to a solid state what are you doing discord saw insanity beach all the why did you launch a bird <laughs> and throughout crash 4 you'll see those what if we launched a website oh it just logged me out style. love it Art teams wanted to take love it from not just the original why? games but the animated cartoons why? That inspired those original games all while also delivering bigger, more awe-inspiring dimensions to we just explore. randomly log people out? Throughout Crash 4, you'll see wild Crash 4, whatever. new vistas, new character models, I don't know. and lots of I was never a uh, Crash and Bandicoot that, fan. Also comes I honestly think the Crash Bandicoot is not a very like good having game. having the ability to wall I'm sorry. Run, rope swing, I'm sorry. rail grind, and zip line on, as well. On Crash. I only played Crash 1, trilogy, though, so... Specifically Crash Warp. And of course, I have to get my off on my phone, which means I've got to get up and go get it. Crash wearing a biker jacket when riding a motorcycle. That seemed like a natural area for us to expand upon. So we have loaded the game with tons of awesome skins that you can earn and wear throughout the game. These skins are totally cosmetic and a fun way to express yourself while playing the game. And just to be clear, there's no MTX here. Skins are earned by completing different challenges and earning gems within levels. Uh, Crash 4 also introduces the Quantum Masks, the powerful protectors I'm revolutionizing. of time and space. Crunchy and chair streaming. Their assistance throughout the New game tech. to tackle the crazy challenges that we're going to yep. be throwing at the player. Your, your favorite streamer Whether turned into Ika a chair. Ika, who gives you the ability to instantly <sighs> flip your center of gravity at the press of a button. Kunawa, who allows you to slow down the world around you. Or Lonnie Lowly, who allows you to phase shift elements in and out of existence. Bending the rules of reality and altering your God environment bless. with these new masks is a must. We also can't wait. I mean, to talk that to you said though, I do like I do economy, like challenging platformers. That's gonna have to wait so. for another day. What we can tell you today, though, is that Crash isn't the only character you get to take control of during this adventure. For starters, you can play the entire game as Coco. Any level that you can play as Crash, you can also play as Coco. It was also very important for us that she take a more prominent role in the story this time as well. But that's not all. We've got a few other characters that you'll get to control at key points in the adventure so that they can provide their oh. own fresh perspectives and new gameplay. Well, be Here a you third can see player? that you'll be taking control of Neo Cortex. So basically, using his Crash 4 is catching up to Super Mario Bros. 2. An enemy in his path. Are you and telling me different characters Cortex, or different abilities? We're excited to reveal that for the first time, you'll also get to tail slap your way through crates as Dingo Dial. Dingo Dial? You get to play as Dingo Dial. And Dingo Dial! And Steph, they had a Dingo Dial! Dingo Dial. In fact, he hung up his old flamethrower rocket launcher combo when he decided to yeah. retire from a life of villainy and open a diner. Unfortunately for Dingo, fortunately probably for too us, excited his adventure begins by witnessing the destruction Jeff? of said beloved diner and getting sucked into another dimension. Dingo Dial. Playable. Finally, there's one more Dingo Dot. Your favorite Crash Bandicoot you character will be playable Crash in Crash Bandicoot, Bandicoot 4. It's been about finding new and exciting ways to play Steph? through the game. In the past, it's been about taking on time trials or discovering all the hidden secrets. Dingo, I'm just, I'm well, for Crash 4, we wanted to bring something is, brand new to the table. So we teamed up with no, our... No, Dingo Dot. Oh, that looks pretty cool. ...a brand new style of play for Crash 4 that we call Inverted Mode. It's just a fine edges filter. bump a berry fueled take on a mirror mode. Not only are perspective shifted, but now each of the dimensions are rendered in a new and unique art style that really changes the look and feel of the experience. Right. One dimension could be asking you to traverse through a neon wasteland. While That's a question from wherever go. I didn't pay money so you could piss in anybody's mouth the environment but mine. to see their path forward. Well, I only have so much piss, all right? We've even got one so. that feels like an old timey movie with the overcranked camera speed uh, increasing the actual speed of gameplay as well. That's kind of cute. Once uh, unlocked, Pandras, players can replay sub. all the game's levels with a totally new and dynamic look and feel. It's an incredibly fun feature that is going to give every player, especially the completionists out there, 
a reason to revisit each level again to see what new and exciting experience is in store for them. That's a neat idea. Just like global modifiers that you can throw on levels. So that's to some of the new stuff that we have in store. Crank out some you. more replayability. Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. Experience the space and time bending madness on October 2nd. Yay! Crash Bandicoot! Gay Pride mode, yeah. Crash said gay rights. State of play is loaded with third party updates for PS4 and PSV. Crash said we're shorts wherever you go. Shorts, excuse me. We open the show with an all new look at Crash 4. It's about time. Crash is Pog. Is Crash Pog? I don't think Crash is Pog. I actually think Crash may not be Pog. This from IO Interactive. Uh, Badonka Duck. Thanks for the sub. I do like that name. Uh, Doc Holiday. Thanks for the prime. We're gonna have any more like head seeking uh, head seeking briefcases? Nac three, baby. Yeah, today's it's got to be the day. It's got to be Nac three day. We've waited long enough. Time for Nac three. Besides, First person hit Mern? Oh, is this is this VR? That'd be cool. You can like put poison in people's drinks directly. Well, I have to go. Hitman VR would be dope. Like the rotting people. Can we finally see Hitman's dong? Yeah, PlayStation VR. That's sick. That's very cool. Yeah, it says VR right there. You're right. There's there's like so many canned interactions in uh, in Hitman though. Like, it's got to be the sort of thing where you just do a motion and then it fires the animation of you struggling somebody, or you like you go down and you like hit a menu option with your hand. The wow, the entire trilogy in VR. There's, it's not going to be as cool as it seems, uh, but uh, that's still kind of cool. Knack, this is it. Knack, 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 knack. Knack. This is a knack. 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 Is this the like the room? It reminds me of that a little bit. Ancient drawings and little boxes and stuff. I feel like the room would go very well with VR. Yeah, no fable today. Yeah, it's next time. Braid 2. Rebraid. Actually, I mean, Hourglass and Puzzles. This might be Braid. Yeah, Braid 3D, Braid VR. This is very Braid imagery. And the music even sounds like Braid. <laughs> Terracina HD, yeah. Re Racine? That looks like Braid. That straight up looks like Braid. Is Jonathan Blow back? Jonathan Blow 2. This is Braid, dude! No way! They're making a sequel. That's awesome! The game that taught gamers to feel. Or it might be a re release, actually, because this kind of looks like. Yeah, this looks like Braid 1. Yeah, okay. Alright, 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 alright. Remaster. Wait, how do you remat? Like, that game was in HD. I guess they're gonna show. We are happy to announce Braid Anniversary Edition. It's the classic puzzle adventure where you manipulate time, hand repainted for modern high resolutions. Many areas have been re envisioned to make them more unique, and it's even more like a living painting with brushstrokes animating the world. That's kind of neat. There are more neat. than nine pixels for each pixel in the original game. They're, they're, there are new animations for smoother motion. You can tell that they, like, they music, had to really iterate movie, through all the things that they did commentary to change and it. Because it doesn't look like that different. Design, programming, and visual art. We but, I mean, that's more testament to how good the original game was. Game ever. So if you want to learn how video games are made, Braid Anniversary Edition will be a really good resource. Never mind, sold. You'll enjoy Director's the game commentary. When it comes out early Absolutely next year. on board. That should change me. Yeah. Is a mythic I think Braid was uh, the fly. first game a lot of people played Let's that made them actually think about games in kind of critical way. From PS5. All games need director's commentary. I would Hi, love everyone. that, but this I also Matt understand Nava from Giant Squid. the difficulty in the, the I'm excited to share more with you today about our upcoming like game, The Pathless. The reason most games focus on combat is the main mechanics, because that's kind of the only thing our controllers easily allow us to do. Set in a vast forest. You play as the hunter. I mean. 
necessarily think that's true. The hunter is a master of archery. I think it's the I think it's the verb most people want to do, to fill her and the, thus our controllers have followed evolution because of that, including adding triggers, which. You know, having more analog input devices on a controller is, is a good thing. So the game's unique take um, on archery is all about timing. If you've ever tried to play a racing game sights. with Waz, do you know this why analog is, is really important for a nuanced input? To shoot, even while moving no, fast I, uh, and performing acrobatic I think people like like breaking things and, and blowing things up. As skilled as the hunter herself. Uh, I mean, so the earliest verb in games was jump, really. Um, but then you jump on things and jump into things. With help from the eagle, you can even fly. I guess shoot. The bond between like space the hunter invaders and the eagle like is that. central in the pathless. It's always been there. Whoa. You can gain altitude while you glide by flapping. I do think a lot of the early stuff we've seen from like next gen is really preparing us for the fact that next gen is probably not going to be a massive feat. You know, like other generations in the past may have been. Like going from you know. Make sure you pet the eagle. Uh, Gen six to, to keep it seven, clean and in good flying condition. Five to six, huge huge jumps. It's getting iterative now. I think I think braid anniversary really 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 drove that home. Chum and big hoss. Thanks for the sub bomb. You'll find secrets all over. I wasn't the expecting island. that. If you know where to look. But I appreciate it. You can pet the eagle. Yeah, that's important. There's a meter down there. That's good. Next gen. Uh, should be about unique art styles, or is gonna be about unique art styles. Collecting it has. That's been the case for a while. The, eagle's ability to flap. the problem is, like, you see this with like or Overwatch and Fortnite. You'll also discover larger puzzles to solve in ancient structures. A unique art style that hits big then becomes a trend. So, it's it's not really about people wanting to make things that technology is limiting them anymore. It's now just purely about market forces. Uh, how much will your game sell? How much funding can you secure? How big is your team? And how much time do you get to make your, your, your project? Um, and part of that is gonna not necessarily be having the freedom to, uh, to make a game exactly like you want, but what compromises so you unlike need most to make open world games, viable no in the market. Instead, the hunter can use her mask to peer into the spirit world. And then good and so far, um, they they, they, they announced like a VR mode been. for Hitman. Which is cool as hell. Getting to higher vantage um, points. Great anniversary. Will let you see further that's sick. With spirit vision. I'm hoping that that makes pe people who haven't played the original maybe pick it up again or just play it again because that's Braid is Braid is a really solid game. Giant cursed spirits, the source of the darkness, will pose a constant threat to you. Is that Major quest. Blue? One they of the next big game that Battle Royale Fortnite Eagle. have started to plateau. Um, I mean, yes, no one knows. If, if anyone knew, they would make it, and then they would be as rich as Epic. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like it will be something that probably figures out how to make streaming technology more integral to the game type. Stay um, still in the light to avoid detection. Uh, not, not this streaming, I mean like game streaming. Something where like games can change on the fly because they're being streamed as a, it's a data stream directly to you. So it's not locked to whatever bits and bytes are in your local PC. So they can actually slip, like, a game that can slip in data or procedurally generate take on the cursed um, spirits game until features you've light to the or game assets as you play it real time. Um, or maybe something that, uh, like, because of spectation, the game itself changes. Not in a literal way like crowd control, but the, the like, the interactions through Twitch chat and the, the player when the obelisks are restored change the, the actual generation of the game as it's streamed to chase you. them down through the forest to corner them in we're a seeing little hints of that battle. now but <laughs> think most could benefit from that tech hmm I think so yeah I feel like um, fall guys is kind of the first prototype of what will be a big hit like that Something that, thank you, Creative Cloud. Um, something that really like leverages that HQ mentality. The idea that everyone has to be online at a specific time to play a communal game and everyone's represented somehow. Whether that's everyone's an equal player in a giant arena or participants can influence uh, the outcome of the game. So like, you know, American Idol. American Idol had ridiculous like crowd participation because you could vote on your phone. Imagine that just through your phone or through spectation, you could influence, you know, a really popular gaming event. Um, I think I think something like that is a game type that incorporates massive, scalable an audience participation and interaction. To bring light back to the world. 
That's a very broad statement. Also, I have nose flakes. I'm sorry. I hope you've but enjoyed this overview off, so. of the Pathless. Oh, that's We've cool. only scratched the surface. Yeah. There's so much more to explore. Kind of looks like a. Yeah, like a. What did somebody call it? Like a. Very uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, even that, even that pose, right? Isn't that direct from Horizon of Aloy, like firing an arrow, like angled in the air, like that? I'm pretty sure that's Next like up, pretty let's major key art for game. Spelunky Two. Yeah, Spelunky Two. Now we're talking. Yeah, maybe not. I'm scrolling For Spelunky through. 2, Screenshot I wanted to make sure we made something that got old fans excited I love and Spelunky. also brought in new players. No joke. I played it so much Spelunky. We didn't change the things that made Spelunky such a unique experience in the first place. So many people became fans of the game through their friends and family, and even strangers that, on the internet. That music so much. That's one reason why we're adding online multiplayer, oh so that gosh. more people can play the game together. And throw bombs at you? Yeah. Great. And I also wanted to include that feeling of community in Spelunky 2 itself to make sure that the game felt welcoming, even though it's difficult. And you can ride a turkey? Okay, sure. In Spelunky 2, when you do runs and discover new characters, you'll also be building an in-game community and family. I designed the world of Spelunky 2 to feel much more rich and dynamic than Spelunky 1. It's going to feel a lot more full. Players I mean, will be able to explore and interact with it in lots of new ways. For example, you'll be able to ride turkeys and find hidden passageways. It's really hard for me to imagine a game being more like and you'll complete have to choose between branch Spelunky paths 1 as you make your way deeper into the caves. Hi, what's up Robert Doers? Good morning. As a result, the stories players create will have much games. more texture to them. Even after video. many, many hours of playing, I still have interesting runs that don't even go past the first area. Yup. Oh. In Spelunky 1, runs often centered around the shops oh and how you gotcha. chose to interact with them. We steal everything, yep, there. So in Spelunky 2, we've expanded shit, shit, the shopping shit. experience and made them more nuanced and exciting. And also added new characters that can help you or hinder you. Oh. Given how amazing the Spelunky community is, it's hard to say how long it will take Spelunky to find the DC. Spelunky one has some major room for improvement after you've been playing it for a while. Yeah, Macrophage. But I think the great I guess thing about I Spelunky I just kind of grinded it out uh, on my own. Even I don't, I don't even about. think I ever got the like full complete ending. And there are lots of new things to play with uh, that I the hope true players ending. can use Remember, to push no, past I got, the boundaries like, of what we I didn't get like the alien the ending, I don't think. Know about the <laughs> game. But I'm pretty sure I got like, I beat Olmec. I have two types of favorite stories from Spelunky fans. First are when people are genuinely surprised by something that happened in the game. Bang! Yeah, eat it, shopkeeper. And second, the ones where people shared a fun experience with friends and family in multiplayer. Beat hell. I These don't think so, These are the stories so, no. I wanted to expand upon in Spelunky 2. Two Atreides, thank you for the prime They're self. really what guided my design choices. Please. After releasing Spelunky, I knew there was a lot more that could be done with the concept in the world. You can red check or whatever, that that's the, the meaning of next gen, yeah. Exciting for me and next gen will be defined by the number of animals in you can mount. In a lot of mount. ways, when Spelunky 2 huh. comes out, Dynamic I want to experience what we experienced making it. Interesting. That feeling that there's something special you there. You need all the gold items and beat Olmec to open the door to hell. Okay, yeah, I did not do that. A big thanks Definitely to the fans that. who've waited so, patiently for us to finish I guess Spelunky I can't, too. I can't claim uh, Spelunky cred. It's been a long time, uh, but I think uh, it's that pissed be me worth off. it. Thanks. Uh. <laughs> this is a really good way to end a uh, Spelunky, a Spelunky demo. <laughs> Just kidding. Ping ponged, your body getting ping ponged around a level. It's not like a reach, but I love a Persona 6 announcement. Dude, that is not the speed Atlas moves at. No, no, no. We might hear about Persona 6 like two We've years from now and then actually see it two years after that. You, starting with a closer look at Genshin Impact. You have my interest. JRPG trash? Do tell. Hey, there's something strange over there. Come on, let's take a look. I don't know about you, but when I'm scouting the horizon, I shove my ass at the camera. Uh oh. This kind of looks like Ruby. Is it just me? Cool. Oh, I guess that one character kind of looked like Ruby. They did. Okay. Yeah. Anime of the Wild? Is this. Yeah. JRPG games like this are rarely open worlds, but it looks like this is. With multiple playable characters? Looks like Saber, yeah. Maybe a little more fate. 
than Ruby. That character does look straight up like Ruby, though. Uh, our art style looks more similar to Ruby. It's not more. It's not uniform across the game. Though. If you cannot bring yourself to kill, speak my name. Breath of the Wild with gotcha characters. What is this disturbance to which I? I am trying to wrap my head around gotcha, but it keeps getting in the way of games that I would otherwise enjoy. Get away! I played Brave Exvius for a little bit, and then the gotcha got in there, and I was like, well, okay, this just destroyed the level curve because I can just summon like a level million dude and destroy every game. Like, gotcha games don't have level curve; they just have grind curve. That's it. It's, it's weird to wrap your head around that there is no game for the first five hours you play any gacha. I claim your mind for the void armada. Gods have squealed for my mercies. Right, I'm into this. Who are you to stand in the way of my vengeance? Benicio Del Pollo, thank you. Red General X2, thank you for the sub. Oh, I like this. This looks like a uh, like turn-based maybe deck or uh, deck building game, if I were to guess. Based on the layout, looks like if your dudes are on a grid, like maybe Battle Network vibes. Go all out or go home, Emperor. Kind of looks like something that uh, Super Giant Games might put out. Oh. That is just a really cool art style, too. This became a, a goddamn perturbator music video all of a sudden. I'm not done yet. It reminds me of Karos. Y'all ever watch that? Aeon must die. Sick. It's a Carpenter Brood soundtrack? It kind of sounded like it, didn't it? I remember seeing this game before. I mean, I'm down with it, you know? If a game just has a soundtrack like this and a scrolling cyberpunky neon background, whatever, man. Chorus was a weird watch. It was. Um, it was one of the first shows that I, like, watched a couple times just because I loved the animation and eventually figured out the story. Like, it was... I actually was able to do that. Whereas most shows like that, I watch it once and I'm like, that was dumb. Then I move on. Um, yeah. Weird watch, though. I agree. Okay, so it's a 2D beat em up. Alright, 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 alright. Anime Girl with Laser Swords and Cyberpunk feature? Yes, please. Oh, she's sad, but she got anime power. Oh, so brittle, but actually so powerful. I like these crucifixes in the background. Got some Evangelion vibe going on. Sony may be scared of the titty. They're not scared of murdering God. It's time to talk bug snacks. Let's check out some gameplay footage captured from PS4. Bug snacks! My invitation is open. Come if bug join snacks me were real, I would be a. I would have a. Uh, an English muffin wow. chicken sandwich that's for a hand. Because that's what I have Another for breakfast. Monster hunt? See, Clumby Clumbernut? Is a two bit con artist! Don't tell me you actually believe this half baked nonsense. I swear, if you chase this bug snack story, you're out of a job! You're the journalist! Screw you, Chief! You be coming. There's a bug snack right over there. What is bug snacks gameplay? You're about to see. My snack trap. Eat that snack! Stranger, I could use your help. Oh good. Your arms articulate in front of the camera. So you can see your your snack hands. Oh, you get a ketchup launcher! I use that journalistic instinct to find out what my favorite bug snack is. A squisherette! Oh, a rudel. All right. Obs. How about Obs. Doing? He misses Papa. Oh, you get a Bond wrist does. laser? Well, I have a few prototype traps that I could put to use. First person snacker, finally. You're pretty good at stuff, and nobody hates you yet. You can catch bug snacks. And bring everybody back to Snacksburg. That is a fair, fair description of who I am. I'm surprised it's first person. Yeah, I... Well, 
I can. I also Thank hope that if you look down, you see your legs rendered under you alive. because if the whole gimmick is that you have to job. eat and change your appendages now to. Get going and try not to fall. It off seems like it's way. it's loose Metroidvania vibes where you have to have certain like hands or feet to navigate certain things. That's my assumption. I haven't seen any gameplay that really implies that yet, um, but I'm hoping that's the case. Like tinges of Stranger's Wrath, the Oddworld game, where you have to like capture certain There's bugs and use them as store. ammo. Let's start with an update on an eagerly awaited PlayStation VR I game. I forgot about this. They're trying, they're trying sword fighting in VR again, huh? All right, that didn't work. The other eight, a million times they tried to do it. I feel like Star Wars Arcade is the only one that kind of does it, but even then, it's it's really just a Simon game. Oh yeah. Trailers for this always look so cool. And then it just crashes to a halt when you have to turn it into a game. Yeah, clang. Everyone keeps trying it because it makes so much sense. Really, Beat Saber is, I think, the closest we've gotten. Because you have to, like, you have to make it make sense telegraphing where to put the lightsaber. Um, otherwise, people just get really frustrated. I guess I didn't play Blade and Sorcery. Also, yeah, left-handed support. I guess Gorn was okay, but Gorn wasn't about sword fighting. It was more about murdering. Whatever you do, stay in the light. Whereas I think the expectation is, oh, is this control? <gasps> that was Alan Wake. Step, Alan Wake. Showing the Alan Wake DLC. They they announced the crossover a while ago. I think it's the next DLC. Yeah, Alan Wake and Controller in the same universe. <gasps> yeah, there he is. At the Alan Wake event, <laughs> the Altered World event. Yeah. Control is amazing. Absolutely. Or the Alan Wake expansion, yeah. AWEs are a thing in the world of Control, too. But please, please, please play Control. Maybe not on a, a stock PS4, because it doesn't run so hot, but... Control is so good. It's so good, you guys. Like, Control takes all the metaphysics of Alan Wake and makes it much more digestible. I guess we got an auto chest. What was with the scrolling text? That it looked like Nico Nico Duga kind of stuff. I've been waiting until you have an RTX GPU. Man. Uh, RTX in, in control looks sick nasty. Con uh, like, control is, is basically the game that convinced me to shell out for a 2080 Ti. Um, I can say it was worth it because I had the disposable income, but. <laughs> Didn't the auto battler market come and go already? Maybe. I think it's still at the phase where people aren't sure where its market cap is. So, I think it's still in that like, well, let's let's put out a few more products and see if it catches kind of thing. But yeah, probably about a, a one or two releases away from just not being a thing anymore. This seems this seems cool. looks neat. Was this, uh, the pedestrian? I'm not, actually haven't heard of that game. Uh, oh. This reminds me of, um, ironically, there was another game called The Room that, uh, is not the mobile version of The Room. It was on the Wii, and it was a puzzle game very similar to this, where you had to rearrange rooms. Um, and, oh, Christ, I have a bump on my shoulder, and it feels so good to scratch it. The Pedestrian is a really good game. It's on PC right now. Is it this kind? It's like a puzzle game where you have to rearrange rooms. Okay, it's The Pedestrian. Okay, it's a port. Cool. Well, I didn't know about that game. I do like those kinds of games. Now let's take a look at two new games headed to PS5. But yeah, there was The Room on Wii is one of my favorite Wii games. Shadows. And uh, almost nobody Ghosts played it. Running like, I think like a lot of Wii games that weren't made by Nintendo. Of a corrupt state. 
They count, ration, manipulate. Ghost of Europe. They've Ghost. taken everything from those they claim to protect. You can't tell if this is like medieval fantasy or just straight medieval. Will not stop us. We aren't an invading army. We are wraiths. We bypass defenses and strike at the heart. Do you think subtitles are bothering you? I can turn them off. I don't want Assassin's Creed. It's not by Sony. It was like it was a third-party publisher. None of the um, none of the games shown are going to be Sony first-party. I think they said that. Was stolen. PlayStation Studios, excuse and me. People call us heroes. Ah. From the day. Okay. For uh, okay, this seems like it's a uh, maybe an action to stealth, others, we Left 4 Dead like. Or there's like co-op co competition, I guess. That's interesting. Maybe like two teams of four are let loose in an, like an environment sim area with a bunch of like AI soldiers. Both teams have to try to navigate through a castle filled with enemies to get to the we are uh, all outlaws. medieval type hunt. I really like the idea of mixing AI and co-op and PVP, kind of like Deathloop seems to be doing. Um, that's pretty neat. From the day gauntlet team fight? Kinda, yeah. Like like gauntlet, but competitive. Two teams of four. Hell yeah, Temtem. Temtem is the realness. I need to get back on Temtem. Four honor, but with a goal? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe a little less focus on player versus player engagements. Man. A medieval fantasy Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, that, that's a good way to describe it, I think. Uh, provided that we have the right idea of what it is. Yeah, better Pokemon. Legit better Pokemon. Is this Sony Pokemon? No, Temtem's out. Nothing in this presentation is Sony exclusive. It's just coming to a Sony platform. Temtem's already out on PC, early access though. Demon Souls remake hype, for sure. We're not gonna see that today, though, I don't think. Because that is a PlayStation Studios game. Surprise Nintendo and Pokemon up, Company haven't shut this down. It's not Godfall. close enough. Like, it's, it's different PS5 enough from Pokemon, I think. For this melee -focused action epic launching this holiday. Uh, I feel like... I don't know who's publishing... Oh, it's Gearbox. There's a, sh a surprising amount of, of, like, placement of Godfall in these showcases. Um, and I'm, I, I guess I gotta give it up for Gearbox. Hello, uh, my name is Keith Lee, and I am the game director for Godfall. They're doing a pretty On good job of shoving games, this game into... We are very excited to share gameplay with you today. And, and if this is like, a glimpse if this is free to play on day Godfall. one, it has a really good shot. Today you'll be seeing extensive like that's really smart publishing. captured on a PlayStation 5 development kit. Please keep in mind that the game is still a work in progress, and some things may change from the final product as we continue Theater, to learn not feeling and it? harness the power. I of I think a game like this console. is perfect for Please a console enjoy. launch. Um, you know, after you after you so finish Miles right Morales, what Godfall is. you know, you spend your six hours and you're done with Miles Morales. Godfall what else is there to is play? A slasher that features intense action. There's not going to be much. I promise. At least combat, there hasn't been much yet. Loot progression um, systems. So, you know, you enjoy the game at your own pace. Why not chunk alone, a couple of, of evenings into Godfall and level up your little sword, man? Additional teammates. Why not? Especially Godfall if it's free to play. Set in a brand new I can see that being a really good universe. Like a really good heroic thing to capture a lot of players who are disillusioned by the launch of the PS4. Five, the world me. is split up. All the HD PS4 remakes, they're realm, not going to be there on day Earth, one. Wow. Uh, air. Maybe a few? But mostly Godfall just going to be straight backwards compatibility, package. and they haven't even All really said what backwards gear, compatibility is going to be. Are acquired or so. unlocked through gameplay. Six hours. There are no okay, you don't microtransactions. I mean, they said it was going to no be for content. comparable in scale to like on Lost one. Legacy, or or uh, as and that's about how long that was. Tear through enemies. Maybe to eight. Challenge a mad but it's not going to be a full Spider-Man game. At the top. 
You play a Valorian knight, a godlike warrior, able to equip valor plates, legendary armor sets that transform you into an unstoppable master of melee combat. Oh, Rise for Xbox Throughout One? Throughout your journey, you'll find Maybe a ancient bit. valor plates lost in time, each with their a own characteristics and long history. Now yeah, no microtransaction truly is a Godfall. feature. First, our team wanted to do something. I feel like no different. microtransactions we now just means we won't have RPG microtransactions on the very the first person day. Melee combat to create so wait, this game is not free is to play? Slasher. Oh. Wait. The game is therefore one Did they come up with the word for Diablo? One part looter Slasher? Are you serious? In other words, not only you do didn't we invent want you that. to find exquisite weapons with powerful loot traits, wasn't you? You don't get to put a word on it. Maybe you do. Of Whatever. accomplishment or mastering the wide set of combat mechanics available to you in Godfall. Look at all these mechanics. From same a combat slash, philosophy perspective. Ah, uh, okay. I can see like Godfall is You got tap combos. You got a tap and weight combo. And interactive, embracing offense over defense. More often than not, you'll be facing multiple enemies at the same time. As a result, you should always be moving and closing the gap on enemies. I mean, it does seem like pretty also, straightforward, you like, dominate the combat space, attack, not the enemies, strings, and dodge and the commands. Game rewards you for being aggressive. Don't really see any, like, Now that you're familiar with mechanics, the combat philosophy, not even, like, the timed themselves. parries or timed dodges. In also, they said the game rewards you for playing aggressively, but the there doesn't seem board? to be... Maybe there's, like, a, a an experience combo the multiplier or something. Where if you like pull off a sick ass combo without getting Hold hit, on. you can get 18 levels or I don't know. If it's fun, then cool. That's kind of where I'm at. Uh, again, two-handed great sword. You're not gonna have a lot to choose from on day one PS5. Each uh, weapon class has their own unique. Same with Series X, really. Play styles ranging from it's fast combos new consoles, to more strategic, deliberate play. As you defeat enemies in your adventures, it's got kind of Kingdoms of Amalur vibes with the uh, for each style weapon too. category each weapon with their own primary and secondary traits. At a later date, we will delve into the weapon classes and how to it. modify them in greater detail. Yeah, that's true. For Series now, X will have Game Pass. We'll go over the dual blades and I feel like I understand sword weapon uh, classes. Microsoft's vision the of backwards compatibility a lot better. Weapon class in God On Series X, you will be able to download Gears 5 and it will scale up to 4K. I don't... They haven't the said that yet about unarmored PS4 titles, and I don't think that's going to be the case. You can perform a combo. Sony doesn't really have the legacy like light attacks. Legacy upres platform that Microsoft has attack built. Is a spinning blade cyclone. The blade cyclone can also be used as a finisher at the end of your light attack combo. It's not nearly as universal. So what that said, you signature know, moves you download PS2 you games or you play PS2 games on PS4, as they you build pretty charge, You can also act they do, they do focus, a little bit. which is unique to the dual blades, which inflicts massive damage in a short period of time. There's also a mortal coil, where you can throw your blade into okay, an enemy, now we're starting to see some enemy stuff. towards you. We got like Devil May Cry yank mechanics. Now let's switch to the longsword weapon class. Longswords are balanced weapons, embodying crisp damage and simple cooldowns without needing a lot of elaborate combo setups. Similar to dual blades, longswords have their so own four-hit light attack that. combo. I mean, then there's the heavy attack finish. Would you rather you were a, a gritty gunman running through a gunland shooting combo. a bunch of gunmen? There are with your gun gun? signature moves for the long sword. Yeah, it's a video game. There's I guess. special flurry, which cannot be interrupted and deals with the It's okay to play a game where you do with a sword targets. cutting up people. Then there's spiral technique, which eviscerates Those games have been fun for like 20 years. Straight they will probably continue path. to be fun. Notice there's a white flash after this a long sword from better swing audio. called a timing attack. Yeah, so you, you can press the shield button exactly at the oh. same time, you'll perform a devastating shield uppercut with your long sword. The shield okay, yeah. is a core part of God. Timed combo branching. It's available to you throughout the entire game. You can always block incoming attacks with your Monster shield. Monster Hunter Dark Souls. Eh. You press the shield button. More at like the right uh, time. Borderlands you can also with parry swords. And attack. Okay, we got. You parries. can perform a light attack. Okay, after so a last we're shield we're filling out the, the kind of the bare minimum of uh, of beat 'em up strength. mechanics. The shield is great not just for defense but also offense. God of War you can shield. aim and God of War didn't shield, invent shields. which will hit multiple nearby targets. <laughs> if you tap the shield button just as you catch your shield, you can perform a powerful wave attack. 
Yeah, it's got timing. You can double or, tap the shield button to like petrify it, I guess it depends how many of those like timing attacks they're going to layer and, and course, how often they'll let you use them. You can perform an so. R3 ground finisher on enemies. The ideal, I think, is, to, is to make the combat system scale to where you can barely keep it all in your head. I think Arkham, the Arkham series, was very, very good about doing that. Giving you the like, almost in Killer Instinct style, giving you the chance at like certain forks in your combo to choose more risky or more safe paths. Um, to me, that's like the gold standard for a beat em up. Uh, I feel like um, all the good beat em ups have stuff like that. Uh, this is like Halo 3, it's true. It's got a dude wearing armor, therefore, that is Smash Why not show a HUD? They probably don't have it yet. DMC combos are art. Yeah, DMC is, is extraordinarily good about that, too. Uh, this does look like Knack, and that's disappointing. I don't understand why they would rip off Knack like this. It looks like he's getting hit every time that happens. Uh, you would think you would expect a different... That's a weird cut. We hope you enjoyed our first walkthrough video of Godfall running on the PlayStation 5. The environments look we cool. We also want to thank all the fans it's, for their It's weird, too, because it feels like this video is even lower bitrate than the rest of the stream. We have a few uh, more surprises coming down the road. Which is a shame, because... Such as details on loot and progression. While I'm not expecting the game to change the world, it should be a pretty and stupid ride for your PS5. Season. We hope that you will join um, our Godfall that's like, community. Oh, it's not even Twitter, launch. Holiday 2020, Facebook, okay. And YouTube. I thought they were thank committing to day one on that. Well, that's going to make that a little tougher. Um, to me, that game is like, okay, I've played through Miles Morales. I still want to see what my PS5 can do. I'd like to see a 40, a 4K 60 FPS game. Here's Godfall. Okay, sure. That's a wrap. I'll, uh, enjoyed this peek into the future of PlayStation. I'll pop an edible and just mash time. buttons and look at cool, sparkly buildings. That works for me. Looks like the generic first wave entry. Yeah, every every next gen beckons. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the Genji days of the blade. Um, one. Was there, like, a beat-em-up around the launch of PS4? PS4's launch was not very spicy. Um, I liked, uh... I liked Killzone Shadowfall a lot. I liked Rezogun a lot. That's that. Still no Call of Duty announcement? No. Call of Duty announces on their own. They don't, they don't need a, uh... They don't need a event to do it for them. Call of Duty, Call of Duty announcing their next thing is a marketing tentpole to itself. Uh... Okay, that's not bad. Um, I feel like the more often that these are done, uh, the hopefully the more realistic people's expectations are. That was a deflating ending. Yeah, not 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 every presentation is going to have the 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 pacing that you're expecting. Some of them are just like, hey, here's what's coming out. And if it weren't for these events, no one would pay attention to these games. Let's be real. Uh, so I'm okay with that. You know, getting eyes on. Getting eyes on a lot of stuff. That was an oof. I guess Sony will have to refund your money. What? <laughs> These are just collections of trailers. What? I'm not. I'm not sure where the expectation was, uh, or or how Sony can fall short when all they're doing is is honestly giving their their they're giving their platform partners they're showing their platform partners the benefit of being in the Sony ecosystem. Um, I mean, it's like Nintendo Directs are like this. Not everything is a show. Sometimes it's just info. Yeah, it's it's marketing. It's marketing. We got more bug snacks. Yeah. Um, this is the world without E3. And honestly, I think this is cool. You know, it's nice to uh, it's nice to see some trailers, especially when they're like curated and, and kind of kind of put in context. So, gamers need to stop with their entitlement. Mm, I think it's okay to. I I get in this specific circumstance. Especially after us gamers, you know, we're kind of used to uh, people climbing over each other for attention, you know? We're kind of used to, during E3 especially, of people, yeah, trying to make the biggest splash possible because you're, you're competing with everyone else. But it's August 6th at 1 p.m. You know, this is not Shark Week. Uh, this, is, this is Sony drip-feeding PR. 
reminding everyone the PS5 is coming out, reminding everyone that there's going to be at least a variety of games. Uh, we can have expectations and we're shouting at developers. That seems fair. I think it's it's fair to be disappointed, but I think that this is like, just realize that my like farmer's tan. Anyway, seemed paler down there. I haven't been outside much lately. Uh, it's fine to have expectations, and I think in context right now, it's certainly understandable to be disappointed in presentations like this. Uh, especially when, yeah, you're used to the big showcases, you're used to, like, closing on cyberpunk or something like that. Uh, but yeah, they, they try to, yeah, Dub Fool, you're right, they had a bullet point list on what it was going to include in the show in a YouTube post. You still have to kind of train people to, to change their expectations, especially with the way things have been with games marketing. So I get it. I think it's, it's understandable to be disappointed, I think. But uh, this is the this is what it's going to be. Uh, in another reality, we wouldn't even have this. So uh, that's neat. Uh, I I kind of like these. I kind of like both the the show of support that platform holders are showing to their partners now. Uh, that's neat, because like games like that would not get that love in an E3 conference. That's for sure, and they wouldn't get that love anywhere else, really. Uh, so it's fun to see that stuff. I learned about some games I didn't know about. Uh, can't ask for more, really. I guess you can. But I wish people are more open to trying out this other games outside the AAA realm. Yeah. I like this better. I can tune into these as opposed to E3, which was always something I had to miss most of. It was so concentrated. Yeah. There... I can't... I don't know exactly when it tipped over, but I remember there being a year... I think it might have been like 2014, 15, when... I, f I followed E3 as closely as I could, and I still didn't see every game. And it and I, I was like, wow, there's there's actually too much. Um, even spending all day trying to look at every game, there's too many. Uh, Godfall was way too long. I, that's weird to say, I guess. Uh, I guess for pacing purposes, maybe, but what else? Like, what? What? <laughs> What part of your day was was ruined because Godfall was was five minutes instead of two? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it kind of got a little long in the tooth. Um, I think it. I think if its messaging was going to people who have already played beat 'em ups, it it retread a lot of ground that it could have just skipped over. Because um, it was kind of going through like, hey, we have all these features, and anyone who's played it like a Devil May Cry is like, I mean, yeah, yeah, you have you kind of have to. Without that. We don't really have a game. Sorry. A uh, little burp there. What was your favorite part? Um, probably the Alan Wake stuff. Even though you didn't really see much. It's just fun. Alan Wake's pretty hype. A little boss fight could have been cut. Yeah. They decided not to. I mean, imagine that you get you get the like anchor position on a Sony conference. Are you really gonna make your trailer shorter? I wouldn't. I'd put I'd put the best possible stuff in as much as I could in. Uh, that's what I would do. So yeah, solid thing. Solid thing. It's a sign of health, I say, to have uh, to have a broad palette of games and many different game types. That's the cool thing. You know, it wasn't just all buff dudes screaming and, and pointing guns at stuff. Which is pretty cool, don't get me wrong, but yeah, it's for me it's just like the variety uh, that I see is really nice. Milk it, I get it. A little, yeah, that's what marketing is, man. If you got eyes on you, might as well keep them as long as you can. <sighs> yes, there's, this is also part of a larger campaign, for sure. Uh, all the platform holders, Nintendo's been on this tick for a long time. Microsoft and Sony are slowly coming around to, uh, to developing their own third party promotional calendar where they hit certain dates at a certain tempo uh really like uh it's it's weird to me that people still have weird expectations about nintendo's timing because they were always very much like we're doing our indie showcase here okay bang that's our that's our beat for this week slash month then we're announcing then we're doing lead up to big release then we release then we do another direct a while like we announced direct. like they have an, a whole cycle and it works really really well and it seems like um Sony and Microsoft are, are getting up there. Want more buff women? Always. Absolutely always. Yeah, that that one anime beat em up looked pretty cool. The uh, Anno... I always I see it and I see ammunition every time, even though that's not the name of the game. 
That one looked neat. Uh, the, like, anime Breath of the Wild thing is curious. That, uh, that, like, hunt, hunt, medieval hunt game looked neat. Uh, if, if it is executed well. VR Hitman. Cool, cool. I would play everything I saw. Uh, with varying degrees of intensity. Aeon Must Die looked very cool. So, I think there were plenty of games in there worth getting excited about. Genshin Impact, that was it, yeah. I'm just curious how that game's gonna work. I'm sure the first time, like, in the first 20 minutes, it'll deliver me to a screen filled with icons, and it says, Tap here to summon an anime hero! And then I will, and then a crystal will explode, and then some, like, giggly girl with big tits will fly out, and she's like an ultra-mega-rare that, Oh, I just happened to get one on the first draw! Use your new hero in this level! She can fly! And I'm just like, oh, okay, I get it, I guess. I can't wait, <laughs> I guess. I'm excited for it to uh, to not be that, but it might actually just be that. Uh, I've, been, I've been like grinding through gacha games on my phones lately, so it's amazing how similar they all are. Like the first two hours of a gacha game, they're all identical, which is frustrating because I don't want to waste two hours getting through the same thing just to figure out what the game's actually like. There will be anime boys too, that's true. There were some, there were some sultry anime boys in that trailer. It was cool, just nothing that makes him go, ooh, PS5. I think that's fair. And I don't think that was the intention of this particular uh, showcase. Uh, but yeah. I, if I'm being real, I haven't seen anything that gets me just hyper-pumped about next-gen yet. From either console maker. Yeah, not really. Uh, which is a bummer. Uh, but I feel like that's also part of, like, gamer pushback. To make uh, representation of games a little more, I guess, realistic. Because um, the big hype moments of the past were largely fake, uh, if, we're, if we're being real. Um, what's the playing in the pot behind you? Oh, so that's not in a pot. That's a, that's a tablet. That's my, my GIF picture frame. Except it's just a tablet right now because the photo app I was using to rotate GIFs kept crashing. It would run for about a week and then it would lock up. So there must must be a memory leak or something. Uh, it turns out I was using an older version of the app. They like delisted that one. So now I'm trying a newer version. Hopefully this one is more stable. Um, it's weird because in the past, I, with that exact version of the app, exact exact same hardware, different build of Android probably, um, I was able to... Uh, oh yeah, oh, there's also a chunky seal back there. But the tablet was able to run for like a year and a half before the battery finally died. I don't know why. Same hardware, same software, same every... Well, Different build of Android, must be. But uh, just had weird instability problems since then. But hopefully this app will fix it. I'm going to let it run for like a week before I cram it back into the frame and put it on the wall. This has nothing to do with Sony. But uh, why buy an Xbox when you can just buy Game Pass through PC? No reason. Unless you want like an easy way to play the same games on your TV. Uh, but even then, an NVIDIA Shield TV will do that perfectly. So, yeah. That looks good. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. I, bu I actually buzzed my head this morning because I was getting a little puffy and LA's in lockdown again, so I can't go to my barber. So I did it myself. Okay. Oh, some games are not on PC Game Pass. There's that too. How much time do I have left on this encode? Gosh, it says 30 minutes left. I don't know what's been going on. So I switched my, my physical... This has nothing to do with PC now, but... Um, I switched my physical drive to a solid state, which I assumed would help videos encode faster... But if anything, I think it, it's slower now, and I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't understand how, when you're encoding videos with Premiere, nothing in your system can be bottlenecked. There's nothing running at 100%, and yet it still takes the video one million years to encode. Encoding a CPU. Um, it can be. Uh, this, is, this is using, it's using CPU plus uh, QuickSync to encode video. State play is over, yeah. But here, check this out. Uh, I don't think there's a problem with me showing this. I'm using OpenCL, which is the which is this this GPU to encode. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to get talk to the internet done. Uh, I don't know why it's taking forever. I guess Premiere is just it just takes its time. I guess uh, just encoded a video for 39 hours. Oh he. Yeah, if I ever have to do changes to like 24 hour streams, it takes about a day because it's 1440p too. That's the other big thing I need for the podcast, especially. I just need to, to down, down res my recording to 1080. There's no reason to have a video stream that's 1440 for a podcast. 
Can I post a Twitter link for you to look at really quick? Oh, you can. I may not look at it though. It's not the process to higher priority. That's a bad idea. Also, it's like, there, it's not getting out prioritized by anything because the CPU is not at, not being maxed. There's a, uh, there is a, a different, pr there's a different issue going on. It may just be Premiere throttling itself or something. All right, uh, gonna take a break. Um, I was hoping this would be done by now, but it's not. Uh, but I'm gonna play a video game anyway. Hellbound is probably not a, probably not a, a system killer. So I'm gonna check out Hellbound. Just a second. See you guys soon. <laughs>